Hello friends, welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading Channel. If you have been here before, welcome back. If today is your first visit with us, we want to extend to you a very warm welcome and invite you to watch any of our over 550 videos arranged for your convenience in playlists as, we've, as we are confident you are going to find something both useful and entertaining to watch. If today is your birthday, happy birthday! Today we have for you another beginning woodworking video. Last week we saw you how to make simple uh, drawers and how to use back joints and uh, very unsophisticated rabbit joints to make drawers. Today we're going to continue this trend and we're going to talk about another joint and the two joints together probably compose more than 80%, 90% of all the woodworking joints you're going to encounter. And that is a miter joint, as you can see here. Right? And what is a miter? 40, 245 degree angles joined. And you can do that, of course, with a hand. So most hand saw boxes have a 45 degree uh -huh. setting. You can do it with a, a power miter, miter saw, which is our choice for this episode. Or you can do it on your table saw. So there are many variations. This is something you can do. In, and where do you use miters usually? Well, you're going to make miters in frames, if you want to make picture frames or to frame something, a piece of art that has a bizarre shape you cannot find in the store. And what do you do? Trim. Today we're going to show you a little bit of work on in a trim uh, project we're having. And we're going to explain to you and give you tips and tricks on, on how to do your miters and, and how to improve, even if you're a beginner, the look of your miters. So stick around and we hope you enjoy the so episode. Today episode. In today's episode, we are going to show you how to do trim around the window. The process is the same around the door, other than the fact that you don't have to worry about the bottom trim piece. And we're going to talk about miters and, and some tips and tricks on how to cut miters and make them look good. Create Stick on miter, which is simply putting a 45 degree angle in two different pieces of wood and then connect them th thusly. Like the thusly? Mm -hmm. So here we have a miter and uh, we chose this because, as you can see, it looks horrid, right? It, it looks really bad, that's why we... It doesn't want to align. Right. So, one of the solutions we have for that, as you can see, we already have done it, is creating biscuit openings and put a biscuit there. And normally we will put uh, glue. We're just showing you the process We're doing now. it abnormally now. We're doing it abnormally. Mm -hmm. And now, as you can see, they're flush, right? And we don't have to put a... Right. Uh, what do you call it? A clamp or anything? Or anything. Yeah, that one. So this this does not add any great strength to the joint, but it aligns the joint better and will make the glue up easier. All right. Mm -hmm. Do we glue down? Glue down. You said glue up, so I just wondered if we ever glued down. No. This okay. is a weird looking picture frame. Is it? Yeah. Why? Because. <laughs> well, it's, it's a, a very, very skinny picture. It's a very narrow yeah. picture. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you wanted to put uh, strength in this joint, you're going to use your uh, biscuit joiner in a vertical orientation, and you're going to put a biscuit thusly. And now that will increase. Well, your the hand strength. is covering the thusly. So that. So in a cross member right. fashion. Yes, and that will strengthen this joint. Okay. All right. There's your biscuit. It's not tasty. You didn't try. Very dry. Very dry and crusty. You didn't try it. So biscuits can be used for miters. Again, this is called a miter joint because we create two miters, 245, that put together give us back a 90, right? 45 plus 45 equals 90. Yes. Okay, good. Just that's, checking. That's what we, this yeah, yeah, just times, checking, yes. right? This is not the math channel, Phil. I know, because you don't like to measure. You see, we didn't measure everything perfectly. Only because we're not putting it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> She's fired. Okay, so last week we briefly talked about a butt join, which is the most simple join you can make, which simply is put one board next to each other and make a, a 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle. 45, mm. what's wrong with me? Don't know. And we modified last week and we created a little rabbit to hide the join, right? Mm -hmm. And we showed you how to make a, a square or parallelogram shape that then can become a cabinet, depending on the width of your board, can become a box, or in our case, can become a drawer. Correct? Yep. And today we're going to talk about a more elegant way to, to make this connection, which is routinely used on trim 
right? And if you want to make a frame, things of this nature that you want a little bit more elegance in them, or simply you like the look better, and that is a miter connection. Mm -hmm. Now this is a good miter connection. The, the boards are not very refined. That would be the right word, right? Right. But uh, if you use really good wood, this can be a perfect connection if you set it correctly. And the tool for this is actually the miter saw. Or we have done a lot of them in the table saw, haven't we? We have, yeah. Uh, so you can use it either way. And that's what the miter gauge on the table saw is for. That's why it's called a miter gauge. It makes miter cuts, right? Now, we're working on a couple of different projects. And we want our wood to be uh, smoother, right? Mm -hmm. More smooth, smoother. Mm -hmm. So we are going to, to run some boards through our uh, planer, our thickness planer. Right, and if you were using finished boards, which we're not, you wouldn't necessarily need to do that, but we're using more rough wood. Well, and the, the savings in cost between rough wood and finished wood is really tremendous. And if you don't have a, a finished planer, you can use the sander. It's just that the finished planer is a faster operation and it's more precise, right? Mm -hmm. You can take an eighth of an inch, inch on, on the whole board. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you a little bit of using the, the thickness planer and we'll be right back. One of the challenges we have in our shop is that everything gets very dusty and we like to use the equipment dust free so we're going to just use our compressor. Clean it a little bit. Yeah, so was that snow? No, that was dust, the thing. Wood chips? Yes. Which you just looked me in the eyes and said, there are none. Not the words your eyes. Guys, you should see here. Are you recording or not? I am recording. She looks like she's I was making a point. She's diving. I was making a point. You said there's no wood chips. You and that outside. Look, there's wood chips everywhere. Look, all, all over, over. Everything. All over. Wood chips that don't come okay, out of this machine. Enough? I think you need one more, right? Yes. It's just too many splinters. Okay. Well, one side's fairly nice. I mean, this I think would be really hard to get all the way without taking the board too thin, don't you? Yeah. And as I say, if we want it just to not be rough, I mean, we'll yeah. never get it totally smooth. It is not uh, that kind of a board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. I think we need to be selective about which side is our good side. Yes, and if we do that, then we need to know where we put the mm -hmm. biscuit thingy. Okay. The biscuit joiner thingy? Yeah. Mm. Because now we took our mark off, but that's okay. We did, but they're all... Mm. Okay. Okay. Good. Now you can see what the planer does. It takes a board like this, which is a rough board, right? Mm -hmm. And it returns you this look, which is a, I think, superior look. And that really showcases that cedar grain. Absolutely. Now again, you can achieve the same with a sanding but it will take substantially longer and it will not be as equal right this takes the equal amount of right every pass the equal amount of wood off mm -hmm. now these are uh, really not intended for furniture building so they're not very well milled these are fence boards right but we have used them in the past for other things and we've had very good results with them mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, miter box, it's actually plastic. We have two of those. And as you can see, there is a setting for your miter mm -hmm. already in the box. And they are in two directions, right? Mm -hmm. So, you just set it and, and forget it, as the advertisement used to say. So you can do either direction miter, right? Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it makes a very good miter, right? Mm -hmm. Now there is another way to make miters in a in a box, and that is if you wanted to miter the other direction in the wood, this direction, right? As you can see, you will have a problem here. Mm -hmm. But you can set it here, and now you can miter this way. Do you see? Yep. So that is the cheapest, the easiest, probably the longest way to do it. Yeah, because you have to use hand tools. And right, but it is definitely doable, right? Right. Especially for trim, material that is not very hard wood. Mm -hmm. Trim is never hard wood, right? Right. Then it is not going to be very difficult for you to do it. The next, of course, is power tools. I would not recommend a jigsaw for this process. Even though we like generally jigsaws, they are not very mm -hmm. good in doing something like this. Right. But the next uh, tool that people might have, most makers might have, in their garage, would be a table saw and here we have set our miter as you can see at 45 degrees hold on there we go and there is another 45 degree on the other direction so you can do it either way right mm -hmm. and we have put our box and we've made another opening and see this is our miter opening you see how it uh -huh. goes through the blade and out uh -huh. and again you're going to see this also makes a very good miter. Let's see, raise it a little more. You can see it, it just perfectly follows the the miter, right? Mm -hmm. So and and simply with this, you just move it. Not the way I do it. That's a dangerous way. Yeah. I'm demonstrating here. Let's do it the right way, so the internet safety police will not be upset. Right. Hold it securely. Keep your fingers away from the blade. But this is a movement. Mm -hmm. This is fast. And it makes a very, very good cast, right? Mm -hmm. And okay. of course, our last one will be the miter saw, which was, after all, designed to do this cut, right? Mm -hmm. That is the whole job of the saw. And so we have it set on the 45. And as you can see again, it has a perfect, I don't know if it's visible in your. It's visible. Mm -hmm. So all those methods will give you very similar results, right? And some people might like the hand tool method. Uh, usually I use the miter uh, saw when I used to do miters. But, and, and I think the second uh, most frequently is our table saw, right? Mm -hmm. On occasion we have used it with a hand saw. Either of them are fine. Do you have a preference, Ms. Elpida? Uh, I think the power tools frequently give us, it, it's just a faster thing and sometimes they can give you a cleaner edge kind of depends on your saw. Right. Well, uh, a, might, a, a hand saw will give you really good edge, especially if you use one for Japanese saw, right? Yeah, yeah. But, and, and that is the important thing. For something, what we're doing now, you want a very nice, clean cut, right? Does it make sense? I mean, yes. you see the edge Yeah, here. because you want the edges to line up very right. crisply and make it, make it be a very nice uh, join. Yeah. And, uh, you could stain your wood. We're going to paint it because my door and my, my windows are white. Mm -hmm. So I want to, to match that plus to break. The whole thing is very cabiny in the office, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to break it a little bit and, and add a little color. Right. Have you decided about the finish for the other the walls, though? It will be natural. Yeah, we're not going to do anything. You're not going to do the wax? Oh, I might. Yeah, I was thinking about, yeah. I think we thinking about the whole wall. Yeah, but we've got enough scraps that we could try that on a... We haven't told them yet what we're doing. So. Well, that's why I'm just You're talking about it. You're breaking the secrets. Yeah, I'm giving them little teasers. 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 Don't be a tease. I'm not a tease. Oh, okay. You're the tease because you haven't told them anything about your office. <laughs> How is that a tease? That is a skipping secrets. That's a whole different story. Same thing. No, no, no. You no. just called me doing the same thing. No, 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 no. All okay. right, folks. We'll be right back. So here so we're going to paint those because we want them to have white trim. They're trim pieces. Mm-hmm. So we're going to paint them really quickly and uh, 
Mrs. Wizard, what are you doing here? You're doing two different things with the paint? Well, I'm going to start with a base of just, it's a kind of a, a flat paint. And then I'm going to fill in any little gaps and make it a little bit uh, brighter with spray paint just to cover any little areas that might need some extra. And so this is fresh wood, so it's going to seep in pretty, pretty quickly. And this is... There we go, we can see a little more of the contrast. Now I like things rustic, so this is not typically the wood you would buy for uh, twin pieces. You would buy more finished wood, but mm -hmm. uh, we bought very rough wood. I, it's a matter of preference. I don't think it's a matter of right or wrong here, but I prefer it this way. Okay. So are you going to do the tops? Yes. On the bottom too? Yes. Everything you can see. Okay. So, Mrs. Wizard is making progress on all the painting. This is the third of the four pieces for the frame of the first window. Here are the other two pieces set aside to do their drying. It's a very nice day out, so hopefully they will dry pretty quickly. And our neighbors are doing projects too. Well, it's, again, a very nice day out, so why wouldn't you? One of the neighbors was splitting wood earlier, and I'm not sure what the other neighbor's doing, except being noisy. It's hard to tell from just the noise sometimes what's happening. Uh, we don't complain about noise. Oh, no, no. Fun. I'm just saying I can't tell what the activity is based on the noise. And because of COVID, we cannot draw by and see. Well, right. But that board's looking nice. And again, better quality boards uh, do better with uh, stain, right? Or being mm -hmm. unfinished. But uh, in expensive boards, uh, they are better to be painted. Mm -hmm. Because then it gives you a nice finish without uh, highlighting any flaws in the wood, That's right. right? Yeah. And of course, you don't have to go white. You can go gray, you can go any color you want. You could even do my you know, colors and be all bohemian and have all kinds of neat colors going on. Bohemian is not a color. Bohemian is lots of color. All right, folks, we'll be right back. When you start working with uh, miters, if the finished project is going to be stained or left uh, unfinished, make sure that, uh, well, I guess in every project, make sure that you take this little fuzz off by hitting it with a little bit of a uh, sanding paper, right? Mm-hmm. And then, as you can see here, we have a little bit of a gap. This is probably because of variations in the wood, because you see it closes very well there and there. Mm -hmm. So this gap is probably something that has to do more with the wood than our cut. So what do you do with this? Uh, in general, if we paint it white like we do, we will cover this and we're going to fill it using uh, silicone, mm -hmm. white silicone, and it really disappears. It makes the... the Join look perfect. Mm -hmm. If you are not doing this, then uh, you can use wood putty. But if you stain it, make sure you buy stainable putty. Don't buy the one that's right. paintable, right? Right. Otherwise, it will show. In any case, as you can see, it's a very effective way to make uh, corners. Mm -hmm. And um, I like to embellish them a little bit by using... You could put like a couple of dowels here. Mm -hmm. to hold the corner together, or as we saw you earlier, put a, a biscuit. Right. Well, the dowels would be a nice touch if you're making a frame that's going to go up on your wall. Right. Something that is visible in this way more. Right. Right. In any case, there are a lot of things you can do, and I like to keep my offcuts because they give you a very nice reference. I mean, they're 90 degrees, right? Can you see? As you can see, it is very good on, on the square. Mm -hmm. And in a pinch, if you are like uh, between two uh, selves or something, and you want to check square, let's say you had something here. I don't have anything that small, but this will give me a nice reference, right? Mm -hmm. And also, if you want to add strength, let's say we were building a, a bookcase, that makes a little bit of a visual interest, especially if you offset it a little bit. And adds tremendous strength to this self. If I wanted to put books or something, 
it will make it stronger. Mm -hmm. So these little off cuts, I know that the Pita and Mrs. Wizard always say that I keep everything. You I don't do. keep everything, I only keep things that I need. Which is everything. But this is little off cuts have a tremendous amount of uh, utility. So keep them. Plus you can play with them. For the children in you, it's blocks. Look at this. I mean, you know. Well, you can keep, have hours of keep fun. Keep going, yeah. Yeah. Level. Yes. So we start by putting the top trim piece and attaching it with uh, some brad nails. And this will serve as our reference piece for the remaining two pieces. Next we're going to take one of the two side pieces and uh, make sure we have a good miter on the top and then we're attaching a, a brad nail. And now we're going to take the bottom piece. I thought we would take the side and then... We can do it, yeah. We can take the side. Okay. We take the other side and we're going to do the same. Just held it on with one... Hold it on, not held it on. With one brad. And lastly, we're going to take the bottom and we're going to bridge the two side pieces. And the reason we haven't attached it more than, with more than one brad nail is so that we can move them and adjust if needed. Right. And again, these are trim pieces. They do not have any value as far as structure. So we don't need to go crazy with the brad nails, right? right. They are simply used to hold them there. You want me to do bottom or side first? And then there? Mm -hmm. Your angle. Do you want another one in the middle of each of these three pieces? No, I think we're good enough. Okay. Yeah. And so here is our finished uh, trim piece, as you can window, see here. Window trim. Window trim. And the door will be the same, except that it will not have a, a bottom piece, right? Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's the same process. We have developed this process because we find it's the best way to make the, the trim fit in nicely. Fit? What was that? Fit nicely without uh, a lot of play on the corners. And you can see here we have a nice tight corner. We need to touch up the little uh, brad nail screws, which are barely visible. We're just very close with the camera, but from a distance you don't even see them. So let me go a little farther back. And as you can see, the, the brad nails simply disappear. Now we're shooting into the light, which is not a good cinematographic process, but so you can see the final project product. I hope you enjoyed our uh, little episode today. And if you did, we would appreciate a thumbs up. It really helps our channel. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Share, like, subscribe, and let us know what else you would like to see in future episodes. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and the Urban Homesteading channel, stay safe, wash your hands, put your masks on, and we're going to see you soon with another episode. Farewell, friends.